Hey everyone, Ashley Mayu here with the Daily Racing Forum. We're going to take a look at Santa Anita Park's stakes race this Saturday, March 18th. It's their seventh race on the program at a mile on the turf. It's the $100,000 China Dow. It's for three-year-old fillies. And it's a field of seven that has been lined up with the big name in the field being the number seven Comanche Country, who last raced in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Philly Turf. But some other interesting runners in here, such as the number three, the Wild Grazer, the four, Fast and Shiny, is going to get back on the turf course. But Comanche Country, eight to five on the morning line, probably going to take all the respect in here on the tote board. So we'll start with the field here with the number one, Paris Secret, an Irish bred filly, daughter of Zoffany, who won on debut and did it quite nicely. That was back in October of 2022 in Ireland, now going to transfer to the Phil D'Amato Barn has a slew of works at Santa Anita Park. Now, the barn does do well with these horses making their first North American start and fairly well with these new acquisitions. Uh, the turf course, very different. It was heavy. Typically in Santa Anita, we don't see those turf conditions that often. Um, I'm curious to see what kind of action this horse will be take on the tote board. Kazushi Kamura's in the irons, who's been riding very well from Phil D'Amato from a limited number of starts. And you never know what to do with these fillies. I think they're kind of a wild card when they come over here. Sometimes they need time to get adjusted. Uh, it's a very different kind of training regimen than they're probably used to overseas. So Pirate Secret, a bit intriguing here. As I mentioned, a wild card. The number two, Havana Angel, another Irish bred filly. This one has three starts all in California. Most recently was in the Sweet Life at Santa Anita going six and a half. Now going to stretch out to a mile. Uh, she was ice cold on the tote board in that race after kind of having two poor efforts prior to that. She has had a little bit of spacing in between those races, about two or three months for each of them. We'll see what she can do just making her second start of 2023. Um, I, I think she can improve, but again, uh, looking at some others in here, we'll talk about about it. I, I think this is maybe a tough spot for her. The number three, the Wild Gracer. This one's trained by Jeff Mullins. Was had a very good meet, winning at 20%. Was second most recently in the Lady Shamrock. We're going to take a look at that race from February 12th. Uh, I thought it was a very good performance from her. She had rattled off two straight wins, was trying to kind of extend that win streak to three. You can see her in here. She's the number three. Other horses who she's going to face again, the number two, T in Conversation. The number five in this race is Princess Bettina. And just look at her stretch run in here, very game throughout and really trying to get to AG Bullet, who ends up kind of rattling a, a win streak of two races in a row. And she's kind of hitting her best stride late. I did think it was a good performance, especially considering she was stretching out to the mile uh, and her previous efforts, we'd only seen her at five and six and a half for long. So the Wild Grazer, I think, is one to certainly watch in this spot. The number four, Fast and Shiny, out of the Bob Baffert Barn. We're going to take a look at that most recent race. Now, this is a dirt race on February 19th. Uh, this horse I thought was super game. I know it's on the dirt, but we know Bob Baffert's runners, tons of speed, but this horse takes pressure and you can see that throughout the stretch run. I actually think Fast and Shiny looks beat at this point, but really game. Uh, Juan Hernandez was aboard for this race and really just gave this horse one heck of a ride and is able to win. Now she does have two turf efforts under her belt. Now, neither of them have resulted in in the money finishes. One was the surfer girl. Then they tried her in the turf again and got her back to the dirt. I'm curious to see what she'll do on the turf. I always like when a horse gets a win and they're trying to get this horse back on the grass. I think that's very intriguing and something to note. The number five, T in conversation. John Velasquez is going to climb aboard this daughter of Candy Ride for the first time. She's one that she's going to need a hot pace. You look down the page, she's had several tries at a mile on the turf in California. And she is just closing every time in her last two. Uh, the pace hasn't been quite right for her to get that set up. She may have a bit of pace in here, but uh, I think the kind of, you know, the hotter, the better in her case last came out. Uh, it was fourth in the Lady Shamrock. Prior to that, the Blue Norther. Um, I just, I don't know what to expect for her. Michael McCarthy really respects his work. He's also having a great meet. The number six, Princess Bettina out of the Peter Erton Barn. Also exits that Lady Shamrock, where this one was third. A really nice performance. We did show that replay several runners ago, kind of going through this field. And uh, another one that's probably going to need that pace scenario. She's really never been uh, involved early in her races. I do think, though, last time out, the pace wasn't that hot. And I did like her late turn of foot. So I do think she's a bit intriguing in this spot. And uh, never a bad thing to see Frankie DeTori in the irons. And then rounding out the field, the morning line favorites, the number seven, Comanche Country or Phil D'Amato. It's no shock to see this horse at 8-5. to five. Uh, Obviously, a big performance, two back in the Surfer Girl, which we're going to look at that replay right now. And then, you know, she raced to Keeneland last time out in the Breeders' Cup. But looking at here, in the Grade 3 Surfer Gal, uh, looking at the performance that she had, she was kind of splitting that field early on. And to see her kind of kick in here, she's the number three. She got to the outside. 
and is just very game in the stretch and is able to run down the kind of the pace setters in here. And then this is what kind of earned her that trip to go to Keeneland for the Breeders' Cup, where she finished mid-pack in that race. Now, we haven't seen her since then. I think this is a great spot for her to come back to the races. But the big thing is kind of looking at these two-year-olds when they turn three and what we've seen from other horses so far this year, sometimes they need a race. I feel like I've seen this several times now. And at eight to five, do you try to beat her in here? Or do you go in another direction? I end up going in a different direction. I do think she's going to be extremely tough in this spot, but I do pick the number three, the Wild Grazer on top. I like that she's had some starts under her belt in 2023. I thought the Lady Shamrock was a very strong run from her. And for that reason, I'm going to pick her on top in here. I think she's going to offer more value than the number seven Comanche Country. And we'll see if you want to look at buyer speed figures in this race. They're comparable. She's not far off. And actually, she had an 81 last time out which beats any of Comanche Country's best. So if that's kind of your, your go-to uh, figure to use, just something to note. So I do use Wild Grazer on top. Then I do go to Comanche Country. And from there, I thought it was a wide open race, a bit of interest in the number six, Princess Patina, who raced very well in the Lady Shamrock. And I mentioned the wild cards, the number one, Paris Secret. Uh, I've been kind of really respecting the work that Bill D'Amato and Kazushi Kimura have done so far at Santa Anita. So that's how I see uh, Saturday's China Doll. Good luck.